Um, I'm not a librarian or archivist. I'm, I'm a regular faculty member here in the political science department. Uh, and uh, I like technological uh, uh, gadgets. And so I, I think I talked with David at a, another tech event and I was describing him some new software that I'm using for some of my teaching. And he said, well, why don't you come and present um, at our uh, trifecta uh, presentation here. So the examples that I'm gonna use here uh, for this class from Salon, you know, relate to teaching, um, but they touch on sort of broader um, questions and issues of, of how we use technology in order to communicate more meaningfully um, in, in, academic, in an academic setting. And so the, the point of departure here for you are you know, the, the, the forms of sort of group discussions that we're most familiar with, namely blogs. If I stand away, can you hear me in the back? Yeah, okay. Or, um, so I don't need to sort of get, stay glued. Uh, or, or blogs and discussion boards, right? And blog and discussion boards are quite useful, but their organizing principle is time, chronology. Um, and that gives them a certain sort of um, anarchic quality because whenever you join the conversation, right, you're joining what just ha happened at this particular point in time, and it's very difficult to get a, an, an overview what happened prior, and more importantly, these discussions generally tend to be decontextualized, decontextualized from uh, be it an image, a, a text, or, or, or a video. So this um, software, Classroom Salon, which is being developed by a computer science professor and an English professor at Carnegie Mellon, uh, wanted something to have communications that is anchored uh, within either a text or in the latest editions also within videos. Um, and so I'm just going to show you uh, what it does, how I'm using it in, in the classroom, and then, you know, in the Q&A we can sort of see how this has implications outside the classroom because uh, the, the grander visions of these people is they want to salon everything, right? I mean, that is, you know, uh, if you want to discuss something, how to have more meaningful uh, sort of group discussions online. So um, if you log in here, let me just go to, this is the home page. And so you, you see there are uh, documents and videos, right? So essentially uh, there are two types of media uh, that are the starting point for discussions, uh, texts or uh, videos. So let me just show you uh, an example here with respect to the, to the text. So this is for a course uh, that I teach to our sophomores on, uh, it's a research seminar where we're trying to get them to uh, write their first full-fledged uh, research paper. And uh, so that's sort of one key component the other component is, you know, how to structure arguments. What, what are the elements of a good argument? How do you evaluate arguments? And so uh, in, in one exercise, uh, there is a short piece by James Surovicki. If, if you know him, he writes for The New Yorker, has these uh, wonderful sort of one-page little summaries on economic issues. And he's a very good writer, and, and his uh, articles lend themselves really well as, as an illustration of what the structure of an argument is. So here is, you know, I upload the, the, the article, and what you see here is the, the very shadings of gray and yellow indicate these are areas where people commented on. The darker the red, right, the more comments there are. So it's almost like a heat map. So when, when you look at the document, you, you know exactly where the action is. Now this is a very short document, so everything was annotated, but if you have a longer document, you know, if it's undergraduates, the red starts fading after page one. If you have graduate <laughs> students, it fades after page four. But uh, that's sort of roughly uh, the idea. Now, the nice thing about this is it, uh, it allows me to see not just where the action is, but I can sort of see where this comment is embedded in the text, or I can highlight a section of the text and then it shows me all the comments in that particular section. So here with Lara, right, that I click, she thought it was necessary to comment on the title and then commented something. Um, if I, for example, highlight this paragraph, 
uh, then these are the comments that people um, made on the particular um, on this particular text. Uh, and I return. Um, the other thing <coughs> that students can do is, is this is the idea if, if you somehow manage to generate repeat visits to the site, right? They then can reply here and comment on a comment. And the more they do it, this then sort of becomes a discussion thread. And this particular exercise, I can illustrate it because it, it was just a one post, one say, a comment. They can also upvote comments. So if they like something, and then you see up here uh, articles that got a lot of likes rise to the surface, and then re receive more, 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 more visits, you can also bookmark something that's just for you personally. So what I do, for example, is before class, I go through it, and interesting books I bookmark, and then I click down here, and then it shows me just the bookmark comments. So that's then one way to sort of sort um, through those, those, those comments. Uh, another nice feature is here, or I should say, you notice that the headings here, thesis, thesis, born. These, these are tags. So I, as a professor, can preset tags, or a student comment something can just create, create their own tag. So that's one other way of then uh, trying to structure the responses of those posts so that when you read it, right, you have some sort of possible structure to sort through it. So in this particular case, um, what I created as the um, preset tags were the elements of an argument. So find the thesis, right? What is the warrant? Find an objection. There are others for evidence and, and reason and so forth. And so what I can do then is, is I filter the document. So here I can filter it by, uh, by tags. So I hide all tags, right? And now I want to see the thesis, just the thesis. Now, this is good news, right? Everybody identified this as, 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 as a thesis, and then there were a few stragglers who thought this was not a part of, of the thesis. Um, or I can add all uh, objections, right? Again, surprising degree of, of uh, agreement on this. So this is just one way to use the filtering by tags. I can do the same thing by people, right? So, um, so these are the, the, all, all the students in this particular class. I hide all. Now I just want to see what Eric had to say, right? Now it shows me all of his comments. If I combine Eric with thesis, I can find where he had the thesis. Um, so that's sort of um, one way of, uh, um, of, of, of filtering it. And so the, the idea here really is, is to then have a discussion that is anchored in a particular uh, text. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I don't have, well, I have one example where there's a little bit of a discussion to give you a, a little bit more of a sense of it. So you see then, right, here, view more, if I click on it, now, the most active discussion here, of course, has been Professor Kreutzer, but, you know, I didn't sort of comment uh, on, 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 on students. Uh, here we actually have two comments. It was me and then the student uh, responding. And you can imagine if, if, if you have many of them discussing, this sort of would become a little side uh, thread. And that's, that's sort of the idea, I mean, of, of the salon, right? I mean, you gather a group of people together around a certain idea, and you have a meaningful discussion, how to uh, use technology in order to create a, a, a virtual salon. Um, so that's, the, um, that's the, 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 the document part. Now, the, the other thing is they also added a, a module not too long ago for videos. Um, and I use this um, for, for flipping the, the, the classroom. 
Well, let me just show you. I'm going to do on a time here. Um, so if I go here to my videos, uh, to help you with your digestion here, you know, just watch. It's one and a half. Uh, it's, are you familiar with that video? Sure. You know. And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me. And I can just feel it. Like literally feel it in my head. And it's relentless. And I don't know if it's going to stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most. Is that I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop would... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing... You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. See, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. See, you're not listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just... Sometimes it's like there's this achy... I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. <laughs> that sounds really hard. <laughs> Thank you. Ow! Come on, if you would just... Don't! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So this is this is uh, uh, you know um, a video on, on on YouTube. You just create a link, and then it shows up here. Um, and then on the side here, the students comment. So what 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 they do is they they watch the video, right? And then notice down below here, there's a little comment box. Sure. You know. And when, whenever there's a there's a passage in the video they want to comment on, they start typing, the video stops, right? They, they're comment, and then the comments down here, I mean, most of the students here comment towards the end, but, but these lines here, again, give you an idea as to where most of the comments uh, were. And then you can, you know, again, it, it's the same thing here. Basically, you have your comments, you can reply, and this can become a thread of discussions that is anchored in a particular section uh, of the video. You can upvote it and you can uh, uh, bookmark it. The way I use this also is, you know, I'm flipping, I started flipping the classroom. The idea of flipping the classroom is, you know, rather than lecture, you create little short little video screens that you put up, students watch it beforehand, you're connected with some diagnostics, some exercises, and then you use the classroom for discussions, for problem solving, for going over some of the materials they don't use. For this, it's, it's really um, uh, useful because, um, just give you, and so this is, you know, this is a course, what, what, what is uh, a lecture on, what is causality? So they, they first watch this little lecture and then they have to post, you know, two things they learned, two things they didn't understand. And I can, you know, look this over before class and I come to, I mean, it's, it's, it's really from a pedagogical vantage point, it's marvelous. I come into class, I don't have to worry what they, whether they viewed it, I can see it. Um, and I know what they don't understand and then we can spend time on this rather than me, you know, blabbing on about the same thing over and over again. Um, Moreover, the, the great thing about it is, is, is students then tell you is I watched this video two or three times because I didn't get it the first time. And they can do it, right? And don't have to rewind live in the classroom by raising their hand saying, Professor, I didn't get it, right? Which they're much less likely to do. Um, but then what I sort of do towards the end, you see here this, this, this pink slide, this is then an exercise. So. This is an exercise that relates to some of the material that they uh, watched before, where I can see whether they understood it, and then they have to post their answers here on Classroom Salon, and I can uh, view it. So that's the, the, the video part. The other thing that is sort of nice, it has some, still somewhat rudimentary, but 
interesting um, analytical uh, tools attached uh, where you can see um, how people uh, contributed. So this here is, is the analytics. Now, this is only available to me as a professor, right? I can see here, okay, so um, on, on which particular day, how many people uh, uh, posted? I can see the... Um, the, the users, how many times they posted. Okay, there's no thread here. Let me give you um, an example here with, with the documents. Let's go back here to uh, the Murray. Okay, the diagnostic. So here, this is the, and then down here, you have a nice little map that shows you the size, right? of how actively various people um, uh, contributed. It's almost very useful if you had a particularly slow class last time around, right? Uh, then next time around you pull up this and say, oh, look here, Neville, what happened? You're so small, right? Uh, was it a busy day or, you know, look at Eric, you know, how big he, active he was and, and, and sort of then next time around you can be sure that that is gonna be the big blue blob in the middle and, and, and motivating you here. Here you can see that the, the tags, which particular tags uh, uh, people used. And then there is also um, a diagnostic for the entire salon. So here, for example, this is now for, for all the individual documents over the course of the semester, right? So the semester started in the end of August. We're here now, October. You see here at the beginning, there was a particularly busy uh, week. So this is the entire class. Um, what I can do now is, is map against this the individual students. So this was, remember this was Eric with the big uh, thing in the middle. Um, you know, so lo and behold, he, he's fairly active. If we now look at, um, where's Deba here? You can see here already his line is, is not quite as, as, as prominent. So you can see um, in terms of this diagram or you have an activity summary. Nope, I should do this to all students. Um, you can sort them in terms of the, the number of comments, right, that they posted. Uh, the lengths of the comments, how many questions they asked, the length of the questions how many replies, and the consistency is how regularly did they interact, right? So if you, if, if this guy, Ryan, would have commented, posted 95 comments on one particular time, you know, it would be a 0 0.01. If he does it every day, every, in 12 hour intervals, always one comment, he would have a, a consistency score of, I don't know, one. I don't know exactly how it works, but the higher the consistency score, the more regularly the student uh, sort of interacts. Okay, so those are sort of some of the, the features of this uh, classroom salon. Um, you know, it, it, it's, they're adding features and refining it uh, um, continuously. It's, it's uh, right now it's, you know, they got some grants from the, um, um, from some of the foundations to sort of develop it. Uh, it's not quite sure what their next stage is, whether they want to do it commercially. I mean, right now it's available for free for anybody with uh, an academic uh, background. There's a, a commercial spin-off of this for corporate training that they're trying to use in order to generate revenue to keep it going. But essentially there's sort of two idealists there who put this together and um, I think it's, it's, it's a vast improvement over the blogs and discussion boards. Um, and, uh, you know, they're cleaning it up. There's some small little bugs here and there, or stylistically, it's not quite as, as, as intuitive as it, it, it could be, but it gets better and better um, uh, every month. Okay, so that's basically um, what I... I planned to, um, to, to sort of present. I mean, there are some possible spin-offs and applications. I mean, if you think like the features with the documents, if you could view journal articles, right, with some of these capabilities, 
it would totally transform scholarship uh, because now you, uh, you, you, everybody reads the, the, and comments on it at the same time, and all your private thoughts now get clustered together and, and aggregated. Uh, and, and, you know, what it would take a, for journals to sign on to this and technologically for this to be adapted to, to journals um, is, is an interesting thing to explore. Uh, it, would, it would also revolutionize scholarship because, you know, the stuff scholars get away with these days in part because, you know, all the, the ruminations and fulminations about ah, this uh, mistake that, you know, are private, they're not aired publicly, if they could be aired publicly. And then, you know, I mean, sometimes there's just difference in opinion and in disagreements, but if that could be voiced and would be a discussion with a pre-known location, uh, that would be um, um, a, a marvelous thing or... or or think a, a community board, right? I mean, new zoning regulations. My wife is on a zoning board. And everybody comments on it, and there are 150,000 emails back and forth with PDF attachments and this, that, and the other. And, and you know, very soon everybody loses track, and, 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 and there's no community. If you could have something like this online, um, it would be uh, much more uh, meaningful. So sort of crowdsourcing of the commenting and the commenting uh, also being embedded in a particular document. I think those are the two principal ideas that inform this uh, salon idea. Okay, that's, thanks. Any questions? So how do you grade? Is it so let's say someone actually goes through and comments, what's to stop the Me Too effect from the second poster going through and saying, Me Too, I agree. And, uh, oh, you know, okay. Um, th thanks that you raised that. Uh, th there's an important feature that I actually didn't mean. There's a time release for the discussions. There are two different views. There's an individual and a group view, right? So in the individual view, you don't see any of the, the uh, orange. Uh, you just see the text. So it, that uh, forces you to uh -huh. uh, in, interact and, and avoiding the, okay. the Me Too thing. Mm -hmm. And then I can release it, you know, in time release to group you, sure. usually an hour before class or something like this, um, and uh, keep it open, and then encourage students mm -hmm. to, 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 to comment too. But again, which is a feature that blogs and discussion boards don't have. Uh, sorry, ladies first, okay? Uh, okay. Um, I had a question. Um, do you use another CMS here at Villanova, or do you just use this system in your class? CMS being a course, uh, management, course management system? system. Yeah, I, um, you know, it makes me always happy when I don't have or can not use Blackboard. Okay. Uh, so, because Blackboard always <laughs> delivers you in third rate, quality, the things that were invented 10 years ago. Uh, um, and uh, I mean, there, there's just so many, in terms of e-learning technology, so many things that are available. So I, I use this thing called Piazza, uh, which is uh, terrific. Um, you know, you can upload the readings. It, it has a Q&A uh, uh, question. Uh, so like, these are the little posts that you create. So these are, you know, for example, the, the assignments, and then you, you hyperlink everything, right? I mean, I don't even print out syllabi anymore because everything is, is hyperlinked to something else, so you need an electronic platform. And then the nice thing with something like this is, um, so like this were the instructions for the midterm assignment, right? And as you can imagine, oh, what's the space limit? What can I do with this, that, and the other? So you have then students posting something below, right? I respond to it, and then there's a follow-up question and so you, you have a discussion thread, and everybody knows before they're sending me an email, let me just check here, and then they have the answer. Or more often than not, a student posts the answer, I can't find the reading, and the student already saw it and said, oh, you know, it's here, or I'll attach it for you. And so it, 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 it reduces the sort of unnecessary busy work in my uh, email box. So that's what I use in conjunction uh, with with this classroom salon. Gary? So my question was, so you have the texts and the videos, and you can 
Anthony gave me the videos from YouTube, but the, the article, for example, that you had pulled up, how, how do you embed that, and how does that get into the salon? You upload it. So, so let's say you, you personally want to make a video, you, you upload it into salon, you don't have to put it on YouTube? No, so, the, so you, have the, you have the documents and the videos, right? The upload process is slightly different. For the documents, uh, they promised that you could upload PDFs, right? Which would be the, the easiest and, and nicest thing. And, and they have that capacity for reasons that I don't quite fully understand. That feature is not active. So what you have to do is essentially you, you have to use some OCR, some optical character recognitions, create a text file, and then you, you, you can upload that. So that the PDF might be coming at some point in the future. So there you actually do the uploading and, and with respect to the videos, right, you create the video or you use pre-existing materials, you upload it either on Vimeo or on YouTube, and then you use the URL link to embed it in Classroom Salon. That's, that's how it works. So. Okay. Okay, thank well, thanks very much. Very much.